Welcome to the Crypto Corner video podcast, everyone. Your crypto radar for all of the latest news, reviews, market analysis, and tutorials that help you master the cryptocurrency market. Now, yesterday I told you about my experience with Exodus Wallet, and um, I brought to your attention something very important about an email that they send with your backup uh, link and everything that you need to delete that email and make sure that you don't just store it in your email so it cannot be hacked because, in fact, that's what happened to me. Uh, so hopefully you managed to catch that episode. I also posted a uh, very comprehensive list of all of the hacks on exchanges that we know of uh, over the last 10 years. And this was on my blog as well. And that, that will be updated regularly. In today's episode, we're going to look at the markets again. And we're going to check out some of the top coins. I'm going to go into the charts of uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, uh, XRP and Dodge as well and, and uh, VeChain. So we're going to have a quick roundup on that and uh, and a couple of news that I want to share with you. This is what we're going to do in this episode. Of course, first, we're going to start with the market overview. OK, and uh, today we're actually doing a recovery on some of the coins. Others are still kind of struggling. We see that Bitcoin yesterday was at 56, today is at 54,500. So uh, still not out of the woods. I'm going to go into the chart of Bitcoin and we're going to look at uh, more details. Ethereum is doing a much better recovery already. 2,244 today, 2%, 2.71% up since yesterday compared to 2.33% down for Bitcoin. Uh, BNB, Binance is doing way better than everyone else. 8% up since yesterday. It is 560 right now. At some point, we were uh, at 580 and, uh, you know, approaching 600. So BNB really outperforming all of the other coins right now as we speak. XRP is doing not too bad. 133 it is today, pretty much the same as yesterday. But um, altogether, it's going through a correction and I will talk about it when we go into the charts. Dodge is still correcting. It is now 31 cents. It was at 42 cents at some point. So 20% uh, down in the last day. And uh, and with uh, yesterday's drop, it's probably around 30% now drop since in the last two days. Uh, Cardano is doing okay, 1.21. I will talk a little bit more about Cardano in my next episode because there are some uh, news and things that are happening with Cardano that will catapult it to much higher price ranges. So uh, it, I'm not, it, it's not going to be, uh, I'm not going to do the technical analysis today, but in tomorrow's video, I will dedicate a little more time to Cardano. Also, uh, Polkadot is still correcting. $33.47, 1.87% down since yesterday. And uh, the rest are pretty much doing the same in the top coins. VeChain VT is also correcting 4.58%. But this is a really minor correction, guys. In the last week, as you can see, it's done 40% up. And uh, the only one from the top coins that is better than that is Dodge which has done 124% up in the last week. I mean, 430% up in the last month. Really well done for Dodge. This is why we will analyze it as well. Now, uh, this is the quick market roundup. The Bitcoin dominance is still dropping. Now we are close to 50%, just above 50%, but really close to 50%. And as I said, I'm expecting it to drop even lower. And with that drop, we can see that uh, the, the price is not doing that great. But it's actually, you know, they correlated. It's the price that is actually driving this drop in the dominance because as Bitcoin is failing to uh, push higher, then money is coming out of Bitcoin and it's going into altcoins. And we can see which are the altcoins that are really taking the money right now. I mean, only from my personal list, the, the ones that I'm watching, we can see that there is a lot of altcoins outperforming Bitcoin big time. Waves today, 23%. New kind of network, 23%. Kyber, 17, 90, almost 18%. Pancake swap, the uh, token cake is also up 15%. And you know that this is in my list for this month. So I'm very happy to see that it's outperforming Bitcoin and many other coins. Koji, uh, Monero, Horizon, Kava, 
ARK, all of these coins are outperforming Bitcoin, Qcoin token, Binance token, DIA and many, many more tokens are outperforming Bitcoin because with that dominance dropping, it's uh, really out season right now. So uh, my focus right now is on altcoins, not so much on Bitcoin, but of course, we always have to uh, look at Bitcoin and, and watch it closely because if Bitcoin makes a big drop, as we saw, everything else will drop. Uh, however, the recovery right now on the altcoins is faster and bigger than what Bitcoin is doing. And this is uh, understandable and it, it's, it's very typical for out season. So this is it now. Let's go into the news and I want to draw your attention to a couple of things before we go into the charts. And uh, one of the first news that I want to quickly comment on is the fact that uh, Edward Snowden is now involved with NFTs and uh, his NFT actually fetched $5.4 million, which he is donating to the Freedom of Press Foundation, which is quite a great deed, in my opinion. NFTs are becoming mainstream with each passing day and we saw many famous artists and even celebrities getting involved or adopting NFTs. And from all of this new wave of participants, it opens the gates for other very interesting use cases to appear, which is such as the example with this uh, Edward Snowden, what he's done in the space by opening auctioning in the form of NFTs all the documents that earned him the witch hunt for which he has been a victim for years and uh, this is the NFT that you can see this is basically a portrait of him uh, formed from these documents so now these documents are immortalized on the blockchain and uh, in addition to that all the income generated from this sale is going to that uh, Freedom of Expression Foundation. For me, this is absolutely the best thing that uh, could happen and, and I'm very happy to see that it's not only celebrities right now that are jumping uh, into NFTs. I mean, most recently we saw Paris Hilton doing her own NFTs and before that Lindsay Lohan. I mean, this is not really uh, the, the market for NFTs, but of course celebrities are going to take advantage of this. And in the very least, we can be happy that uh, they're bringing more awareness and, uh, you know, more people into the NFT niche because NFTs subsequently would lead to more adoption of cryptocurrencies as well. So it is strange. I mean, we always thought that DeFi and uh, last year we thought that DeFi is going to bring more crypto adoption. Before that, we thought that just simple utility utility will bring more crypto adoption and in the end it turned out that it's the NFTs that are bringing the biggest crypto adoption. Of course besides uh, speculators and you know people just jumping into crypto for personal gain, NFTs is something that really opened the door to many people who did not even want to be involved with crypto such as some of my friends who are artists. You know, they're, they're now interested in NFTs because they see all of these reports about uh, huge sales of NF uh, NFT art and everything else. Uh, of course, gamers were the early adopters of NFTs. They were the original NFT adopters. But uh, now it's really spreading across mainstream. And as we see that, it will ultimately bring, you know, more people into crypto, which is great. Another headline that I want to quickly mention here is the fact that um, Cointelegraph is pointing out that now we are seeing a uh, huge inflow of institutional investors in XRP and uh, and I, ju I did jump into XRP during this dip. I, I feel that it's time now to start uh, getting back into XRP because we see that the overall sentiment is very positive and it's very likely that uh, they will get this court case resolved you know, in a positive light for XRP. So apparently we are seeing that the assets under management in institutional investors uh, of XRP has doubled in the last few weeks and in fact in the last week alone. So uh, this is good news. It means that uh, even institutional investors are now starting to have confidence in XRP, which is also good for me. Uh, this is the kind of thing that I needed as a confirmation that I am on the right track. So um, I will look into XRP in the next segment when we go into the charts. But uh, before that, a quick message from our sponsors. This episode is sponsored by Opolo Cosmos, the latest hardware wallet device to hit the market. They successfully launched their Kickstarter campaign, which you can see here on the screen, which got funded in just 19 minutes. 
and with more than 200 backers. This is a device that supports more than 120 coins and more than 200,000 different tokens. So it is definitely one of the best devices right now on the market. Also, it is using the most secure chip available with CCEAL6 Plus certification. With it, you can directly exchange crypto to crypto using two integrated coin swaps and even fiat to crypto exchange. There's also a password manager to store passwords and 2FA keys. It works with a desktop and a laptop. It is on Windows, Macs and Linux as well and also Android smartphone. Apollo is also the first device that is audited and certified as a IoT secure device by Digital Security Paris. Apollo uses sharding backup of three or five cards to take redundant backups, which makes it easy to backup and, of course, very secure. And even if you lose one of these cards, you can still uh, do the backup with only uh, some of them. So if you're using the three cards, two of them will be enough to actually do the restore. If you're using five cards backup, three of them will be enough to do the restore so it is uh, this is you know one of those features that i haven't seen in any other devices also it's got a touch screen display large display which is 2.3 inch lcd display making it easier to type passwords and with the passwords you can use up to 127 characters long password not that i expect you to have such a long password but you can if this is what you want to do which will make it unhackable pretty much uh, you can also get it at uh, almost half price right now on their campaign here you can see 16 more days to go and uh, this is at 47 percent discount so this is almost half price it used to be 51 percent discount when i first featured it here on this channel and i recommended it to you and i shared my link with you now it is 47 percent discount pretty much the same thing uh, 16 more days to go as you see they have already 216 backers which is great and you can grab the link from the description below to grab this device at this discounted price which is a, a very good offer i mean none of the other devices right now are at half price so these are the kind of offers that we get on black friday or something right anyway with that said let's move on to the charting and take a look at some of the coins that i mentioned already we're going to start with bitcoin of course okay so what we see is that we're still below this trend line even in my previous analysis, I told you that we need to break above this trend line. This is now our current trend line. So we are in a downtrend. This is still in the short term, but it is a downtrend until we break above it and stay above it. Uh, this support here, the green one, was holding quite well twice. We challenged three times even. We challenged it, but this is on the hourly. So it's, you know, in the short time, we challenged it three times and we didn't break. If we go down again, the more times we challenge uh, a support or resistance, the more likely is that we will break it. So if we keep going down there, it is still possible that we can break below this support zone. And if we do that, we will be going down towards the lower support. We have uh, 50 and a half thousand. This is support. And then we have even lower one at 45. And even if we go down to 45, that is still not going to cancel our bull run. If we look on the daily so slightly bigger time frame we can see that in the previous drops we had a first we had a drop here at 31 percent here we had a drop at 26 percent now let's just quickly see what is this drop right now and it is 21 percent okay it went slightly lower so 22 percent drop we had so every time we drop we actually make a smaller drop 31 26 21 percent this is bullish so as long as we don't actually break below this and start going towards the lower support zones we are still quite bullish and even if we do though let's just delete this and even if we do go to the lower support zones let's say that uh, we do something like that over the next few days and I'm not saying that we will, but let's assume that we will and we go towards this lower support. This is still going to print a higher low than this one, a higher high we have than this one. So we are still making higher highs and higher lows. So this is a confirmation that we are still 
in a bull market. Make no mistake, this bull market is far from over. We still have many more months to go, at least until the end of this year, before we can start worrying about, you know, whether this bull market is over. I saw a few videos recently from this most recent drop over the next uh, last few days. I saw people starting to talk about the possible ending of this cycle and stuff like that. No, I feel that we are far from over on this cycle. We still have a lot of room to grow before we even start thinking of being peaked and then starting to do the next downtrend. So, and you know, I'm talking longer term. In the short term, we are in a downtrend. In the long term, we are still in a bull trend. So, this is what I want to see from Bitcoin right now. I'm watching for this trend line to be broken and to start challenging the previous support, which is now resistance. And uh, we even have the, the first resistance is at 56,200. We, we were there, we were there yesterday, but uh, right now we are dropping again. So we'll see how it's gonna go over the next few hours and the next few days. But um, I feel that also we are approaching, you know, this line very much now. And at some point, even if we stay around this price level, at some point we are going to be above this trend line. So we will be out of this uh, downtrend. And even if we just stay at these price levels. But I feel that it's time for Bitcoin to start moving upwards. So we'll see how it goes on the daily. We are just below the 50 moving average. So this is not great. We need to go above the 50 moving average. This needs to be a support. It is a support. We are currently at this support. But if we keep going down, we'll be breaking below this support. And that's not great because the next strong support for us is really the 100 moving average, which will at this point over the next few days will coincide with the Fibonacci level that I've drawn previously at 50,000 and a half. Okay, so the next one will be Ethereum. Again, very quick look at Ethereum because it's not really doing uh, anything too different from Bitcoin, but a slightly better performance overall. It had a smaller correction. It had a, you know, kind of a faster recovery. And if we look on the hourly, in fact, we have already broken above this uh, short term downtrend that we were forming as the drop occurred. However, we can see a bearish formation on the MACDs. So this is not exactly great in the short term. In the short term, we can see a bit of a downward move, maybe coming down here to challenge this uh, trend line to see if we're going to break below it and uh, hopefully we will not. I expect that we will probably be stopped out here, we'll find support and then we will continue. Also, we have formed a double bottom here, which is good news because a double bottom is in fact a bullish formation. So uh, the RSI is no longer overbought, so that this is also not too bad. And in terms of resistance, we don't really have a stronger resistance until 2500. So this is definitely our first target. And then my next target is at 3254. This is what I'm expecting for Ethereum. And uh, this is also why I was just selling some of my um, tokens that I got from Cosmo Masks. You will see it in the next video that I I'm going to show you because I wanted to put some money into Ether. I'm expecting that Ether is going to outperform Bitcoin during this recovery. It's already outperforming. It is recovering better than Bitcoin. Okay, um, what will be the next Dodge? Let's look at Dodge because many people are now really uh, interested in Dodge. And, uh, and I, in my previous video, I showed you that we were forming a double top. That's exactly what happened. We were just starting to form the second top. So I wasn't sure whether it is a double top, but it is confirmed. It is a double top and this is why we dropped. Now we did perform really well during this correction though. I mean, the dip, I wouldn't necessarily call it a correction because it was artificially imposed, but um, we did perform really well uh, during Bitcoin and Ethereum and everything else dropping, Dodge was actually going up and, uh, and it's now correcting. 
which is also to be expected because as you see we had more than 400 percent gains in the space of a week and after such a parabolic run of course we're going to correct and this is not even a big correction i mean i'm still waiting to see dodge dropping more uh, i told you in my previous video that i'm expecting dodge to drop more than what it's currently doing and uh, for me it wouldn't be surprising if we do at least a 40 percent drop from that high so that would take us to this uh, 0.50 fibonacci level that i've drawn previously and then the 0.618 fibonacci is at 21 cents are we going to go that low it is possible um it might not happen because I see that the support for Dodge is absolutely outstanding. This is a typical example of what a loyal community can do because this price action is driven, of course, first due to the fact that it has the support of influential people, uh, but also the community of Dogecoin. There is a lot of people who are just buying and holding Dogecoin. I'm not one of them. I, I trade it now short term. I don't even want to hold it longer term because Dogecoin is one of those coins that if it drops, properly it could really drop all the way down to the you know 20 cents or even below 15 14 cents this is the strongest support that it has before that it has a strong support here at the 26 cents but if that support gets broken then we don't really have a strong support here this is not a strong one so we could go all the way down to you know 15 cents or something like that and it's done it in the past so i can expect it to do that as well i made a very quick swing trade here on dogecoin during this last few days during that drop in the market the overall drop for all cryptos i bought a few things including xrp and dodge and uh, a few other things but with dodge i already sold because i didn't really want to uh, hold it longer term so if we go any lower and we break this support i can get some as well and then wait for the next leg up and sell again but for me this is going to be if i get into dodge it's always going to be short term dodge is not one of the coins that i want to be holding long term now let's look at uh, litecoin as well and then after that i will look at xrp and uh, litecoin is also recovering what seems to be better than bitcoin because it's already broken above this trend line this downwards trend line it is above it it stays above it and now it's at support levels 255 is a support we are slightly above it but you know we are very close to that support it looks like this support is holding very well at least in the short term so i'm actually seeing a bullish case for litecoin and hopefully it's going to start going towards this resistance right now this uh, became a support very briefly but it didn't really hold us so it is now a resistance that needs to be broken 300 this is a level that we can easily go above break above it and then my next targets are around the all-time high of litecoin i'm still waiting for it to happen this is going to be over the next few weeks as i said in my previous analysis and some some people disagreed with me and they were thinking that already this week we will be at 400 well we are not uh, so again um, it is performing as i expected but i'm still waiting to see it go and challenge this resistance first before we can start the proper bull run towards the 400 and uh, let's go and look at uh, xrp right now and uh, what we can see here is first of all the market is uh, looking a little bit bearish this cross here this is a bearish one so we could actually go lower with xrp it is correcting now it's not uh, performing as well as some of the other coins but at uh, 1.26 it's actually quite a good price range we are yet to challenge this uh, downward trending line we need to break above it and then we can start going upwards uh, but we have formed the double bottom that we did see in many of the other coins so this is typically bullish in the short term uh, it could we could go a little bit lower but i doubt if we're going to be breaking support levels and we do have a support that we formed here during this dip and uh, this wedge pattern right now it is uh, one of those bullish scenarios that it looks like we should be breaking above it there is still a chance that we break below but it, it, it's most likely that we will be breaking up and if that happens we can assume that we can have a let's say we break somewhere here 
that means that we are going towards the two dollar price range and this is also why i did accumulate some xrp i went back into xrp after so long uh, here at this dip this was ideal accumulation point for many coins but i did get scoop some xrp and i'm happy to see that uh, institutional investors are also now getting with xrp because it just confirms my sentiment that we are now out of the biggest danger with XRP, all of the signs are there that the court case is most likely going to be ruled in their favor. And if that is to happen, then we can easily go to the three and four dollar range, which will be the all time high challenging the previous all time high of XRP against the dollar. However, XRP against Bitcoin is still having a long way to go until it gets even to even close to previous all time highs. Uh, we still need to conquer these price levels here at 4000 Satoshi. Then we need to challenge the 10,000 Satoshi, which is going to be a huge resistance because we can see that we challenged this twice three times and we never managed to break above it so this is definitely going to be a big resistance and i don't feel that we will go above it we'll see how it goes anything is possible but um, first we have a few other price levels that we need to challenge and uh, the first one is 4000 which is going to take us where we were in 2019 so i hope that we go there and because it wasn't that long ago and then we have the seven or eight thousand range which was also in 2019 we were or was it 2018 2018 october we were at these price levels and uh, and i want us to go back there and uh, this is where i will be selling as well because once we go to these price levels it's most likely that we will be hovering around them for some time we are not going to be breaking them that easy but we have to go to the 4000 satoshi very soon and we have to break above it because otherwise xrp is still a coin that is not for many people it's not profitable yet okay and the last one i'm gonna look at today is vet because i did cover it in my previous video so let's go on the one hour and see in the short term it actually performed really well during this dip it didn't actually drop as much as other coins it was going up for most of the time and this is against bitcoin of course I, as you know i do trade this against bitcoin i'm not interested in its fiat value so hopefully it, that still works for you and um, against Bitcoin, it performed really well because Bitcoin was losing dominance. People were coming, going out of Bitcoin. And uh, apparently this was one of those altcoins that uh, people were putting money in because it was outperforming Bitcoin big time. Uh, it is printing this flag formation, which is a continuation uh, pattern. So if we are to break above this, I, I believe we will very soon then we can continue the next leg up and we are in uncharted territory with this coin because we have not been this is an you know it printed an all-time high this is all-time high price levels for vet against bitcoin and uh, of course against the dollar as well uh, so this is very good news for vet while we are still in this uh, uncharted territory anything is possible we don't have any price action previously history to actually judge what can happen and to see what the support and resistance levels i mean support we can see easily because this is here a support that we formed we challenged it and and we didn't go below it it held us and it held us here as well so this is the support where is the resistance well on based on fibonacci levels we have a resistance at 534 and then at 716 is the next one so these are price targets and they are also resistances i want to see us continue going up and this is the first target that i have it looks like we are steadily going up towards this target so i still have my holdings in vt and i'm not coming out of this token yet okay well this is everything for today's episode guys thanks for staying until the end as usual share it with someone else who would also benefit from watching it and show your support by leaving a like and a comment below if you're new to the channel hit the subscribe or the follow button because i still have a lot of great content coming to you and i'm posting variable content as you can see it's not only technical analysis or, or you know price predictions and stuff like that but i'm bringing a lot of new projects to your attention and tomorrow in the next episode i 
will do that as well. So make sure that you catch this one, hit the notifications bell if you're watching this on YouTube. Otherwise, you will not be notified when I'm posting a new video. And YouTube is gatekeeping a lot of this crypto content ever since uh, last year. So uh, it's not really great. It's, it's really good to have this notification so that you never miss an episode. With that said, also check out the links in the description below where I dropped all the important links to all of the crypto services that everyone should be using, top exchanges, top hardware wallets, my charting tools and everything else that I'm personally using uh, where I'm buying crypto and just check out the links in there. You will find a lot of important links. Well, this is everything for me. I'm signing off and I'm going to see you in the next one.